hi guys so we're here today at the studio because i'm going to show you guys how to make the atlas bags this video is a little bit long overdue but i was made aware of the fact that some of the steps were incomprehensible to anybody other than myself so i was like i should put out a video this is what it looks like and yeah let's get started before we start, I also want to preface by saying this is an intermediate pattern, but mainly due to some of the ways that I have decided to finish some of the things, because the main construction of the bag is actually quite simple. I do try and mention some alternative methods as we go along for those who might be a little bit less experienced or just looking for the easy way, which I don't blame you. Okay, let's begin. One of the things you'll need in order to complete some of the finishings is bias binding. The bias binding I'm using has been cut by myself in the same fabric the bag is in, just for the extra consistency and the way we will be using it, uh, you actually want it to be not folded. However, you can use store-bought binding as well. You will also need a way of overlocking raw edges. I'll be using an overlock, but most domestic machines will be able to do a zigzag or overlock stitch. This is what the symbol for the overage stitch looks like on my Janome and the appropriate foot to go with it. Something else to consider is using a heavyweight needle. Lastly, you'll also need a lobster swivel clip that is big enough for a one centimeter strap. First thing you want to do is print and assemble your pattern. You can get the pattern from my website for eight pounds and will be linked in the description below. When printing patterns using normal printer paper, sometimes I find it can be a bit difficult to line up since the paper isn't transparent. That's why you see me cutting off the excess white space. I also like to use masking tape to tape the pieces together so that it is easily removable if you make a mistake. Next, you want to cut the pattern out and then onto your chosen fabric. Remember to mark out the notches and the optional drill holes at this point as well. The drill holes just help line up the seam later. Now we can start sewing and the first step is to overlock the tops of the pocket front. So piece number four and six, then wrong side up, fold down the top edge by 1.5 centimeters up to the notches. Press and stitch in place with a straight stitch. Place the pocket fronts on top of the matching pocket bases. You want both pieces to be right side facing up so that you can only see the right side of the fabric. This next part is to finish the edge of the pockets using the 2.5 centimeter bias binding. This can be quite fiddly and I'll link another tutorial in the description that I found to be really useful when doing this myself. You can create a normal bias binding however for the bags that I make to sell, I like to make the final stitch in the ditch so that the front of the pocket is a lot more clean. You want to lay the bias binding right side down against the edge of your pocket and make sure the first stitch is about 0.5 centimeters from the edge. This is for a 2.5 centimeter binding so if you use a larger binding you want to increase this. When you get to the corners, stitch off diagonally off into the corner of the pocket. Fold the binding so that it lines up with the perpendicular edge and continue sewing. I like to iron the binding after rather than before the first line of stitching since this allows me to make sure the binding folds over enough to catch in the second stitch. I clip the binding in place before going back to the machine and stitching the last stitch in the ditch from the front of the pocket. This is how I fold the corners as well. This is what a pocket that has been completed using a normal bias binding looks like. As you can see, the stitching is a lot more visible. To prepare the key strap, you fold the two edges one centimeter in to meet in the middle and press that flat before folding in half and pressing flat again. Stitch this in place before looping it through the key clip and folding under to hide the raw edges. The fabric in this part can be a little bit tough to get through, so just go slowly. Now you have all the components ready, it's time to construct the main body. The long strap, piece three, should have two notches and corresponds to the side of the body piece that also has two notches. Place the strap piece right side to right side on top of the body piece, matching up the two notches. Then take the strap piece and pocket two, place them right side down, making sure the strap matches with the left notch and the pocket matches with the right notch. Do the same for the other strap, except there should be just one central notch where all three pieces match up. Then stitch and overlock across that edge. Next, you want to press that seam towards the center of the bag and also pressing the pocket over so that it now sits the right way up. Top stitch this in place. Now for the binding. If you choose not to finish off the edge with a binding, I recommend overlocking the edge, folding it under and then just top stitching it. I don't recommend leaving the edge raw since it's cut on the bias so it will end up stretching over time. 
For the binding, you want to start from the corner as shown and stitch the binding down right side to right side all the way to the other side up to the notch. It can be slightly difficult going around the tops of the straps, but I find it helps to stretch the binding a little bit to curve it around. Stop sewing just before the notch and trim the binding about 1.5cm below the notch. To help with the next step, I like to remove some of the bolt from the tops of the straps. I cut off about half the seam allowance just along the curved edge and then cut little triangles out to release the tension. Now it's much easier to fold that binding over to the back. Next, press open that seam you've just stitched and press the binding over the seam allowance to meet the middle of that pressed seam. Finally, encase both sides of the seam allowance into the binding and fold the entire binding over so that it is sitting entirely on the back of the strap. I really hope that makes sense, but if not, I hope you can see what I'm doing from the video itself. Press up to the notch, but don't clip it all the way to the notch just yet. For the strap tips, just try your best to get this part flat. There will be a bit of creasing in the binding, but it's kind of unavoidable with this method. Now for the side seams, you want to fold and match up the edges in the triangle cutouts. If you have marked the drill holes, this is where you should match them up. I'm just marking them here by eye, but the reason I've included them is because when you fold the pattern, there's a slight disparity between the two corners because the angle the two adjacent seams sit at is different. Now just clip that seam in place and follow it along to the notch. Here you want to match up the folded edge that has been bias bound to the notch and it should be sandwiched by the open binding from the other side. Stitch this entire seam on the machine, back stitching at the start, but as you come up to the notch, you should overlap the line of stitching done in the previous step. This is what the notched area looks like when complete. Overlock the seams as well, stopping just past that notch. At this point, your bag should be looking way more bag-like. To finish that binding in the inner corner, wrap it around the seam and clip down like so. Everything should be nice and flat. Stitch one long stitch around both straps to hold down the binding. When you get to the strap tips, just go slowly. I like to interchange between stitching and pivoting little by little to get around the curve smoothly. When I reach the end of the stitch, I just overlap the first few stitches to make it look more continuous. This is some close-ups of the stitching. As you can see, my strap tips are not completely flat. For the final couple stitches, turn the bag inside out. In the corners, you want to create a little pleat in the seam allowance so that when you turn it out, the corners are as sharp as they can be. You want to also push the seam allowance towards the base of the bag and pin the tiny pleat in place. This is so that when you top stitch the seam allowance down, the corner doesn't flatten. Hopefully what I mean makes a bit more sense in the next clip where you can see me stitching over the pin. You can see the corner rippling a bit because it's sitting against the flatness of the sewing machine. I don't usually recommend stitching over pins, but in this case I found it to be the only way to keep that corner sharp. Finish the top stitching with a back stitch when you reach the end of the seam allowance. Do this for both sides. That's the final step. Now just tie up the straps and your bag is complete. This is my personal Atlas bag that I literally use every single day. And if you decide to make one of these with the binding and everything, believe me, it will last you a very long time. It also carries an insane amount of stuff without looking like a giant sack, even though it kind of is. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching.